I um, live in Colorado. Um, currently have a, a plethora of snow outside the window. Um, and um, as far as a little bit about me, um, I work full time um, as a technical business analyst in um, the software, educational software industry, um, primarily. And um, I am also um, working on creating a coaching program um, that is geared toward um, helping people through personal change mm -hmm. um, with a special focus on um, change related to loss. So that could be loss of a uh, loved one, loss of a job, loss of a home or a, a marriage. So any of those things would qualify as loss. Okay. And you did a thing recently. I did a thing. Um, yes. So I published a book. Um, I wrote a book um, called Permission to Grieve. And it is really a part tribute and part um, personal workbook um, for myself uh, related to the loss of my um, younger brother and only sibling um, who I lost to cancer um, in 2017. Okay. So you've been playing with a lot of things. I have been playing with a lot of things. Yeah. I'm so also, so I'm also, I probably shouldn't leave out the fact that I'm also a mother to <laughs> two children. One has just graduated from teenager dumb. She just turned 20 in January. Thank you. And then the other one is 16. Okay. Oh yeah. And a spouse and I run a household and you know, all of those, those things that. All of those things. Okay. So as context, right? And, and I know you already. And so, but it, pause for a moment and consider when you were like, yes, I really would love to participate in this hot seat. Yes. Um, what was that thing that you just, that feels like a wall right now? So I really think um, the main thing that is jumping out at me right now is I am um, really struggling with some burnout. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think it's part burnout, um, just trying to do all the things um, and um, coming through 2020 and just <laughs> all of the, you know, the state of our world and, and all of those things. But I think honestly, the other part of it is that um, I spent, um, I spent years knowing that I wanted to write. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not very good at celebration. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like in some ways, um, last year was a tremendous year of, of growth and achievement for me. And I almost feel like I, I've now hit a point where I'm stopping and taking a pause and reassessing, what do I wanna do now? Mm -hmm. Like, do I want to continue forward on a path that I thought I wanted to, you know, start on. And, and part of that is that I feel like I crossed something off my bucket list. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, there's a, I feel like there is a need for a pause and reflection as to now what, you know, do I, d does that, um, does that change the, the goals or the direction that I want to go? Um, moving okay. forward. So for years you had this goal, right? This, and this knowing, right. I want to write, right? And also this, this feeling of purpose, like this is important. I want to get this out there right? and be a resource. And then it happened. 
right? You birth the thing. Right. And if I'm hearing you, then it's this, okay, I've done the thing. Now what? Right. Does that feel about right? Yes. Okay. Very much. So you also mentioned burnout in this, right? Yes. Kind of piece. So what my hunch is, and tell me why I'm wrong, that there is something, there is a thought that says pausing is bad right now. I shouldn't be pausing. I've done this thing. Right. I should, I wanted to do this. Why am I not feeling more fill in the blank? Is that true? I think, I think that's definitely part of it. I think I definitely have, um, I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm a recovering over committer. That's something that I have always struggled with um, is the pause and the rest. Um, I am, I am learning to nurture that and to nurture those techniques, but I don't think I'm very adept at it yet. Okay. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm in my toddler stage. <laughs> All right. Okay. So what, what are you craving, right? So you've given birth to this thing and now it's out there and right. there's this, I've heard you talk about this pause, this rest, this question of what now, mm -hmm. if you were to just pause for a second, mm -hmm. maybe take a breath and honor the fact that you wrote a book that you're bringing new parts of yourself into the world, not just through the book, but also through your coaching, through the people you're meeting and impacting. Mm -hmm. Give yourself a moment of gratitude for that. Yeah. Yeah? Well, and I think I'm, I'm also in, in my toddler stage of learning to celebrate. Okay. So what would it, why is celebration important? I think, I think celebration is in some way, in and of itself, a pause. It is a, um, an opportunity to um, reflect on the accomplishment it's an opportunity to tie that red bow on, on top of that, that accomplishment mm -hmm. and to recognize that there is, there is that piece of closure. Mm. How does that feel to just sit with that for a moment? I'm a crier also, I guess I should have Good. Should have said that at the beginning. I got um, it. <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, I think it. I think it it feels good to have that. You know that that pause. Um, I think I have a long history of learning that pausing is not. Um, is not maybe the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know that our uh, our society or certainly the you know the family that I grew up in recognized the value of the pause, and so I think that um, there's a little bit of an inner struggle there. Yeah, I just got this sense, and you can tell me that. It's not at all true. So okay. see if this lands. Yeah. You mentioned this really important word, closure, right? That time, that this pause offers you an opportunity to honor, to reflect, to tie the red bow, and to offer the opportunity of some closure. Yes. My wondering is, does that feel scary to think about closing that chapter, which has been such a part of your identity 
the, the moving through the grief, the right, right? Because there's the book, but the book is a culmination of your journey. Right. Well, it's, I guess I would, I would reframe that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, it's a stop on my journey. Okay. So if you bring closure to that mm -hmm. moment, what's there for you? You know, I think, um, I think it's a, it's an excellent question. I think in some ways the, you know, the closure is less of the journey because the grief journey is never going to be complete. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I feel like it ebbs and flows and, and, and changes over time. Um, but I don't know that, that that journey will ever end. So I don't, so I certainly don't feel like the, the book is and and closure on that is a, a closure or a separation okay. from my brother or my grief or, okay. or what Good. have you. Um, what I do feel though, is that, um, that, you know, I spent um, the second half of 2020 just pedaling really fast, whether mm -hmm. I was, you know, pedaling in my, in my corporate job during the day or trying to, you know, take care of my family or writing a book or launching a coaching business or whatever. I feel like um, there was some additional energy mm -hmm. that was pushing me along that I feel like has dissipated now. And mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the pause, if that's the, the closure and a, you know, hooray, you can now rest as you gear up for the next thing. Or if it's a like, okay, that was, that was good and that was exciting, but now it's over. <laughs> okay. So I love that clarification and that clarity, oh, by the way, right? Um, of, so here's where I've been. There've been all of these things. This is what the closure is about. This is what it's not about. Right. Okay. So in terms of this pause, whether you want to think about it as celebration, which it feels as if there's this celebration is hard for me. So, you know, right. sometimes we get wrapped up in words <laughs> and, you know, I'm a fan of celebrating, but it's, it's not, I think we, we attach this meaning to celebration that it has to, right. And yet what you're describing is very much, and it almost feels like an honoring. Does that ring true? Yes. Yeah. So what, what would change, what would be different if you gave yourself permission to honor this, this which you've been, this which you've done, what would be different? You know, I think um, in some ways, I think it would, it would give me the, the permission to I'm almost visualizing a, a cocoon, mm -hmm. you know, to, to have that, that period of, of rest and, and quiet and transformation mm -hmm. um, as I moved on to my next step. Okay. And I, I think that historically um, I have, I have felt like th there was an absolute need to continue to push harder, run faster, you know, to get to the next step without taking that, that time to cocoon. And so I think that cocooning, which I think is what I'm craving, mm -hmm. um, it feels a little scary just because yeah. it's not, it's not a practice. It's not something I have any any history with or any practice. Okay. With. 
So you've done new things before. I have. Once, maybe twice. <laughs> so what would it be like to say, okay, I haven't been a cocooner in the past, mm -hmm. but I'm going to go in with a beginner's mind, you know, and allow myself to cocoon in the way that feels right to me. It sounds so easy when you say it. <laughs> What if it was? And and I know, you know it's not. But but no. But but I think you know. Um, so the the first word that caught me in what you said was permission. Mm -hmm. um, there was that, you know, that moment of, well, who do I need to ask? Like who who would grant me such permission to? take this time so who would grant you that permission yeah so i know the answer to that question <laughs> yeah, but say it out loud for fun uh, <laughs> i would grant myself the permission oh, okay so and what would you go ahead go ahead i was just gonna say and i know like it's not some far off person that I would have to like make an appointment with. Like I, I could probably sit down with myself today and make that decision. Okay. So what would it take for you to give yourself that permission? What would you need to believe? You know, I think, I think the main thing that I would need to believe is that there would be there would be value in that pause, in that cocooning. Um, and that, that that pause um, would not derail me. Mm. Um, not all, not terribly dissimilar from when, like I, I hearken back to when I had babies and I thought, can I really afford to take time off to be at home with my babies? Is that going to derail all that I have worked for? Okay. So I think it's the same kind of thing. It's yeah. really that, that, you know, I need to believe that there's value in that, that there will be something valuable that comes out of that. And that, um, you know, that I won't lose ground, which is ridiculous because how do I define losing ground, right? It's, you know, I see all of the other people around me that are trying to do the same things that I'm doing and pushing to build, you know, build programs and, and, and businesses. And I think, you know, well, if I say I'm losing ground, well, compared to what? Compared to who? Uh, okay, right. So what I've heard you say is your brain recognizes that there's evidence for the fact that it is valuable to pause and that you don't, things might be different, right? Perhaps your career trajectory would have been different had you not, you know, paused at that point for your right. kids. But, but you've done, things that you wanted to do. Yes. Right. So just letting the brain kind of register. Okay. Right. Because if the brain is really good at telling us the, the things that could go wrong. Right. <laughs> right. So we want to look for evidence. Can you think of any other examples where taking a pause has added value? So, and not um, derailed. Right. So, unfortunately, I, I can't think of a lot of times in my life that I have paused. Mm -hmm. What I can think, what come to mind are times that I probably would have benefited from a pause that I didn't pause. Okay. 
So yes to those, but, and can you, so even if you can't at the moment register, I paused, there was value. Can you think about things that you've seen either in your life right around you, read about, it could frankly be in a movie or a show, <laughs> right? A fictional character. Mm -hmm. You think of examples where you have noticed that somebody has paused and it did not, de not only did it not derail, but it added value. So ironically, the first thing that comes to mind um, is an article that I was just reading um, about um, an actor who made just some major life changes, life decisions over the course of the pandemic when there was a forced pause, yeah. a forced downtime. And I think if I could, I think really, if I think about it, there are probably a lot of things that, you know, I, I can think of a lot of positive things that have come out of um, kind of the forced pause of the pandemic. I, I would trade them all for the lack of pandemic, but, but given where we are, I think, mm -hmm. I think there were definitely positive things that came out of that forced pause. Okay. So it feels like, right, in addition to giving yourself this permission, and really it feels like, you know, so actively it's, I almost envision you writing yourself a permission slip. And Amy, it might be a daily writing of the permission slip. Right? Yeah. And, and that might by itself just be, because it's, I mean, any, you know, right. And I, and everybody that's watching, I talk about this all the time. Like none of this is flipping a switch. Right. It's especially when there's this ingrained thing, but then I wonder if there would be value to you actively, it doesn't have to be a long time, but spending some time brainstorming, looking around for other examples of evidence, because it's sometimes easier to believe something when it's not about ourselves because our brain can discount it when it's us. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. How does that sound as an exploration? I think it sounds like a great, a great exploration. And honestly, if I think of, I'm really good about experimenting in some areas of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that I have allowed myself to think of this as an experiment. Yeah. And maybe that's what I need to do is, is experiment with this cocooning practice, because I think that it may, what I may find is that instead of detracting from speed or progress or forward movement, it may in fact allow me to get more clear so that um, I can, when I do take steps forward, they will be in a targeted direction and a little less fluid. Yeah. A little absolutely. more focused. Absolutely. So when I was a classroom teacher, um, we, one of my elementary schools, geese was our like theme for the year. <laughs> random. Um, but the important thing about that was, and I'm not sure why, what geese actually have to do with it now, but it was this idea of moving slow to move fast. Yes. Right. And so I love this idea of you literally seeing this practice of cocooning as an experiment that you cannot get it wrong, right? From that place of this is new to me. I've done new things before. I'm going to look at cocooning this way. And then I'm going to turn it on its side and look at it this way. And maybe one day cocooning feels like this. And maybe one day cocooning feels like this, right? And really looking at it from those different opportunities um, and seeing what's there. My hunch is you're right. 
that it's a little bit like, you know, when you do some decluttering and then you're like, whoa, what did I just create space for? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then not being afraid of that, right. Of, of allowing whatever process needs to unfold to transform literally to be that process. If you think about it, a, a, butterfly that cocoon process is actually not that long of a process it's like no. 14 days I used to teach third grade science I should remember don't tell that I don't I have no idea I'm like 14 days sounds good no idea yeah well and you know I think it's it's funny because the the butterfly and the cocoon is coming up a lot in our lives right now because mm. we have this 20 year old who's a sophomore in college. And there are times when we really want to help. And my husband and I have both started calling her a butterfly or our butterfly less because of any particular attachment to that, but as a reminder to ourselves that she has to struggle against that cocoon to, so that those wings are strong. Yeah. So, so give maybe, yourself the maybe same that's, permission. Yeah, maybe that's what I need to do. Okay. All right. So what is one takeaway from today? Um, so I love the idea of a daily permission slip. Okay. Um, and I love the idea of treating this as an experiment. And just that idea alone is inspiring me to, to look at this differently. So thank you. you. Oh my goodness, thank you. And later you can go back and look at the comments. Um, there's a whole lot of love in the comments uh, So and, and understanding. So you can relish some of that later. Uh, and then you're gonna have to check in and let me know how this experiment and the daily permission slips go. So I promise. Excited. The teacher in me is like, oh, permission slips. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I promise I will check in. All right. Thank you for just being so courageous and really, I, I mean, I always love chatting with you, but I'm really, really grateful that you are just showing up for this process and for yourself. Well, so thank you for all that you do and mm -hmm. Um, for those who have not worked with Elena, she's <laughs> fantastic. So jump in here. Um, but I just, I am so, so appreciative of just the, you know, the questions and the, the redirection. Because I think so many of us, we, we have that inner knowing, but sometimes we need help to draw it out. Yeah. And you're a master. Oh, well... Thank you. I, I get to do what I do when you show up for yourself. So I receive the gratitude, but I extend it back to you. All right. All right. All right. Well, let, and if anything comes up, let us know. Let okay. Know. okay. Will do. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Okay. So in just a second, we're going to have our second hot seat. But what I would love is for those of you watching, hi, Shane, hi, Maggie, hi, Kim, who I'm about to see in a second. Um, I would love for you to share your takeaway. And I saw some of you were talking about this, the idea of pausing, and it's hard. Um, and the comment about it being easy when I say it, you all crack me up. Uh, Right, but just take for a moment and consider what is your takeaway from what you just witnessed um, in terms of Amy's exploration and how does that idea of pausing and writing your own permission slip and seeing something as an experiment um, land with you. Okay, and then when we return to this is so much fun. All right, let's welcome. Drum roll, please. We're gonna welcome Kim. Hello, friend. Hello. I had to How are you? Mute my iPad where I was watching Amy. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Otherwise, there would be a feedback loop that none of us would appreciate. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, welcome to all the fun. 
Yes. You en- did you enjoy watching Amy's? I did. I did. I, I feel like I just went through a catharsis. It's like, oh gosh, now I need to like pull together my own energy for my own. <laughs> okay. <Where's> my cocoon. <laughs> well, we can create that space for you. <laughs> so Kim, welcome to this fun exploration. I'm so delighted that you gave yourself permission because there was a little bit of giving yourself permission to be here. Yeah. Yes. What I would love is if you would just introduce yourself, tell people a little bit about you, where you are in the world. Um, sure. From there. Okay. sure. So I am Kim, and I have been working with Elena uh, off and on for three years, but pretty intensively for the last year and a half, maybe almost two years intensively. Uh, did all the Thrive Circles last year in Thrive Unleashed now. Um, been in a, in a pretty good place. I focused a lot on decluttering, not just decluttering stuff, but decluttering the stories in my mind. Um, I'm trying to find my purpose in life. I'm still working on that. And I, I got to a point towards the end of last year where I was in a pretty good place. I even did this video with you about what it means to thrive. And you know that was like, yay, talk about all the, the easy, fun stuff. And I'm at a point right now where I'm feeling overwhelmed again with the clutter of, uh, I think Amy said something about being a recovered overcommitter and yeah, I'm not recovered, still overcommitting, which was, you know, the joke of should I even sign up for hot seat coaching because that's committing to one more thing, but cost benefit, yes, hot seat coaching is worth it. So that's why I'm here. I'm feeling overcommitted. I'm feeling overwhelmed, kind of stuck. Um... And I'd like to just talk a little bit about how to get unstuck. Okay. So there are some things that you have taken on in these last four months, six months, even really, right? Um, Even in the last year. And, uh, you know, you mentioned this, this decluttering and then this kind of looking at your purpose, right? So this feeling of stuckness now. Yes. What does that feel like? It feels heavy, um, almost kind of like claustrophobic because I have taken a lot of things on. I've said yes to things that seemed exciting and like they might lead me in the direction of my purpose and I don't know where they're leading. And at least for the near future, I have and trapped to such a negative connotation, but I am in a situation where if I'm going to follow through on the commitments that I've made, which I very much want to follow through on the commitments that I've made, things are going to be a little tight until June. Okay. So you chose these commitments, right? And there are at least two that I can think of, right? Maybe there are some others. Do when you think about those commitments, right, there's this feeling of, of the stuckness, the heavy, the claustrophobicness. My question is, do you think that you would feel better if you didn't have those commitments? No. Why not? I don't even have to stop and think about that, right? Both, um, and, and I feel like these are mystery commitments, right? They don't need to be mystery commitments. I'm, I'm in yoga teacher training that I started in in January, which Mm -hmm. has been a much, much bigger commitment than I ever imagined. That's gonna go in through June. Um, Thrive Unleashed, which I love uh, with you and a group of wonderful women, but hey, more work than I ever anticipated. But again, good things. And I'm also in a group called Healthy Deviant You, which started in September, which I've I've said, I've gotta take a back seat to that one. And that's been okay. But all of these things are bringing um, information to my life about who I am. They're bringing some purpose. They're bringing joy. I mean, they're positive things. It just feels like so much sometimes. And then I think, but I signed myself up for this. Ah, okay. So what I hear you saying is you en- there's a lot, right? Each one of those by themselves is a lot. Mm-hmm. 
but they're giving you information. They're helping you do some discerning about yourself. You mentioned joy, right? They feel positive. Mm -hmm. So what if it could be overwhelming and a lot and the place that you needed to be? It always, uh, just like you said, sounds so easy when Elena says it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So my hunch is that there's this, there's this feeling of I'm doing too much because it's, it's intense, mm -hmm. but sometimes things are intense. Yeah. And yet we tell ourselves that that's bad. Mm -hmm. Well, actually my hunch is, and tell me if, if this resonates, is there's this question of, can I keep this up? Yes. Is that really that's, true? Yes, that's what it is. Yes, that really rings true. Can I keep this up? Can I do everything I, I need to do to be successful? I mean, especially with yoga teacher training right now. I mean, there's, there's the names of all the positions in English, much less in Sanskrit, and the cueing, and the philosophy, and the anatomy, and there is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So there's a lot. And? And that's just the way it is, number one. But number two, I'm the one that's setting the bar for how it has to be done, right? Mm. I don't need to. I, I was in your yin yoga class last night. I didn't hear a single Sanskrit name. And that didn't detract from the class. <laughs> mm. Okay. Yeah. Right? So... Uh, so beginning to notice where, right, there are pieces, we make meaning in all sorts of places, right? And I mean, the thing with yoga teacher training, and, and I know this, <laughs> as you know, and I've, and I think, I don't know if I've shared with you, right, but I'm doing meditation teacher training, and it's a full 200 hour. Oh, wow. And, and I'm thinking, why did I, right? And I know that I'm not giving for a lot of different reasons, the full depth in part because it's online and it's kind of easier to like sit a little bit back. I mean, there are 600 of us as opposed to the small group that you're in, right? But, but there is a lot and yet I signed up for it. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted the depth and, and yet there's also this deciding of, so there's a lot. I don't have to take on and integrate every single piece in every single way in this moment. Right. Does that make sense? It does. So in terms of, you know, for you, can I keep this up? Can you keep this up? I can keep it up for the next few months. Mm. It's Which, time bound. Right. Yeah. So there's that also piece right. of, you know, that there's an end date, mm -hmm. right? June teacher training will end. Right. Drive up How do I let end. it actually be an end date? Because then we have the bigger problem of we we have this problem, Elena, that I <laughs> sign up for. <laughs> right? Like, like I'm refinancing my house right now. That is more involved than I thought it was. Oh, it's a yeah. It's gonna be done by Friday, but I'm like, oh, I have space for this. I keep thinking I have space for things, and then later thinking wow, I didn't realize how big of a thing this was going to be. And maybe if I had realized, I would not have taken it on. Okay. Or I'm going to offer an or. It's kind of an and. It's an or and. Because <laughs> I get to. Um, what if one of my hunches is this feeling of a lot. There's a, there's like an automatic desire of no too much. Mm -hmm. Must because you've been so focused on decluttering. Yep. And I feel right. like I'm failing at decluttering right now. Okay. Side note. Right. Side note. Is that Parking true? Lot. Right. I get it. No, it's not true. Okay. <laughs> I was like, it's not even a park. Like, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna okay. write the permission slip, but that one's not true. <laughs> because also because, oh by the way, decluttering is an ongoing practice. Yeah. Never done. Right. It's it so and and I think sometimes we get really overwhelmed by all the stuff and we think, because we talk so much about decluttering, oh, like I should pare back, I should scale back. It shouldn't feel so big and, and all the things, right? 
And yet sometimes we have moments in our life where there is just a lot of stuff and that stuff isn't bad per se, but it's, it's the reaction, right? Our, because you're spending, my hunch is, tell me if this is true, you're spending a lot of time thinking about being overwhelmed. Probably, yes. Yeah? I'll say at night when I can't fall asleep. Okay, so knowing that you do have a lot of things on your calendar, what becomes important in terms of, okay, but I can actually keep this up. Right. How do you how do you coexist and, and make it an and let it be overwhelming and positive? What needs to happen for that to for those two to coexist? I think I need to, as part of my daily practice, and part of especially maybe in my morning routine, ground myself in the benefits that I'm getting from these things. I, you know sort of like a gratitude practice, just an awareness of the benefits, awareness of the good. I think that will be like a proactive way of reminding myself. And then it would be helpful when the I'm feeling overwhelmed story starts to play in my head to, to try to recognize it when it pops up and then have something that I can say to myself to reframe it. Okay. So would you like an idea for that? Oh yes, I would very much like an idea. Okay, this isn't a new idea. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> You've heard this one before, but it's a good reminder. I mean, maybe, right? But but first, I mean, there's always a brain dump. Mm -hmm. And and the, of course I feel this way, yep. breath, right? Yep. So that's one play of just giving yourself permission because it's not about discounting how you feel, mm -hmm. right? So I love the idea of grounding and the benefits of coming back to the why. I'm a fan of why. Why is it good, right? Of like, here's the purpose and here are the benefits. Here are the I get to's, right? Okay. So then on the flip side, when you're feeling that overwhelm, okay, of course I feel this way. And, right, and, and maybe I had two thoughts, right? So there's the breath. It's okay, I feel this way. And thinking about, almost connecting it back to that benefit, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That was one thought. The other thought was, um, you know, the other question that you've heard me say before that I really love is what do I know for sure in this moment? Right. Right. And it might be, I'm tired. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you being tired in this moment doesn't dictate how you're going to feel tomorrow. Right. Right. How does that sound? That makes a lot of sense because it's very easy when you feel kind of icky in a current moment to think, oh, it's always going to be this way. I am yeah. always going to feel icky. And that's right. not true. Okay. Right. And, and you might be thinking, I'm going to feel this way until June. <laughs> right. And I might not feel this way until June. And June might come and I might still feel this way because <laughs> I yeah. might sign up for something else. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's this, my sense is, you know, there's this giving yourself permission to not have to equate overwhelm with bad. Yep. Right. So what would it take for you to believe that overwhelm doesn't equate to bad? That is a great question because I have probably been equating overwhelm with bad since I was a kid. Yeah. It is a lifelong, deeply ingrained message. I am overwhelmed. It's too much. I can't handle this. Okay. So if you were going to start mm -hmm. to, to write a different pathway for that, mm -hmm. what would you have to believe? Well, I would have to believe that it is possible for overwhelm not to equal bad. Okay. Anything else? I would have to believe that my being overwhelmed could be a good thing. Okay. Anything else? I'm sure there's other stuff. Is there anything that you would have to release 
to create space for those beliefs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would, this is just the flip side of, of what I just said. I mean, I would have to release the, um, you know, the belief that overwhelm is bad, which is just, you know, definitional, foundational in my being. I yeah. need to let go of that and, and really, really let go of it. You know, not just say, mm -hmm. oh yeah, it can be good. It can be the path to good things. It can be the path to my purpose. I need to really believe that. Okay. So can you think of a time in your life where overwhelm was good proved true or wasn't bad? How about let's start with there, wasn't yeah. bad. Overwhelm didn't, wasn't bad. I'm sure given enough time, I could think of this in a hot seat coaching <laughs> session, a little more difficult to come up okay. with the answer. So just like we did with Amy, can you think of examples outside of you mm -hmm. where maybe something that was overwhelming didn't have to be bad? Yes. I mean, I can't think of a, a very specific example right now, but all the time we hear of stories of people who have gone through something very difficult, very overwhelming, and they come out of it on the other side, grown, changed, found purpose, all sorts of, those stories abound. Okay, right? Yep. So if you know that those stories abound, yep. imagine you getting to write that story for yourself. That's a whole different perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what would it take, right? So you've talked about the daily practice, the grounding in the benefits. Um, is there a, a statement a something that you, that would feel good to start to kind of play with in terms of overwhelm not equating to bad? And, and it's not about jumping to overwhelm is good, right? Because your brain is not going to make that jump yet. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what is, is it, I'm open to the possibility that overwhelm doesn't have to be bad? <laughs> or, right, what, what would ring true in terms of creating some space around this thought? The kinds of things that are, are popping into my head are along the lines of, you know, yes, I'm feeling overwhelmed right now, but this could be the path to my purpose. You know, something mm -hmm. along those lines. Okay. And I just let even the statement, this could be the path to my purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I also like, because I'm a what if person, what if this is the path to my purpose? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Um, you always get to choose your words, but <laughs> I'll, I'll interject some. <laughs> Maggie says, wow, the feeling overwhelmed isn't a bad thing is blowing my mind. Mine right? too, Maggie, mine too. <laughs> but, but this is the, I mean, Think about the power of this, right? Yeah, it's huge. Like it has never even occurred to me that it's possible that being overwhelmed is not a bad thing. Now, let's be super clear, right? Do we <laughs> want to walk around embodying overwhelm? No, <laughs> right? I'm like, oh wait, let me just make sure that I've got this. And because, so yes to you grounding. Yes to you, giving yourselves permission for healthy releases, mm -hmm. right? But then also knowing like intensity. I mean, and, and it could be, I mean, I think about it as overwhelm. It, it also happens for people when you start something new. So let's hypothetically say that one day you decide to start a new business, right? Mm -hmm. You go out on your own. Oh, by the way, not necessarily an easy, right? Like there are intense things. Yeah. And so giving yourself permission to know what if this, you know, is the path to my purpose? Mm -hmm. 
instead, because I think we tend to, we, we, we feel that overwhelm, that intensity. We put a wall up because it's, it's protective, right? Like we want to be okay. Yeah. And yet, right. This idea of, okay, like hard things don't have to be bad. Right. And if you put the wall up, then there is no door to get to the other side where the purpose is. Ooh. Ooh, okay. So the purpose is on the other side of the wall of the door. It is if I put a wall up, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So what would be there for you if you gave yourself permission to play with this idea that overwhelm doesn't have to be bad and that this could be the path to your purpose? It could be transformational. How? Say more. It, it just, it, it, I, it, like I said earlier, it's been just a foundational belief and part of my life that overwhelm is bad. I mean, that's just one of my biggest triggers at work, in my family, you know, whatever I'm doing, when I get overwhelmed, that's when I spiral and I freak out and just, you know, <sighs> happens. That was a great face. Um, <laughs> so it, to be able to reframe that thought which would help me be able to power through the overwhelm instead of getting um just brain fog stuck by it you know because when i get overwhelmed i have trouble thinking what what's the next step what am i trying to do why am i even here you know it's just meltdown is what happens and if instead of melting down I can go through the overwhelm and get to the other side and go through the door and find my purpose. That would be good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> and I just had this visual of, because you said brain fog of literally like a fog light. Yeah. Right. It's mm -hmm. not going to make the fog go away, mm -hmm. but it, it, it creates a pathway, After right? It fog. shines light forward. Yep you know, I like visuals. So, you know, you might, as you play with this, really start to think about what does that look like in terms of not melting down and going through? Yeah. I see a vision board in my future. Ooh. Maggie, Hillary, start looking for fog lights. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So what is one takeaway from today? that overwhelm might not be a bad thing. Who knew? Who knew? Oh my gosh. Wow. And I almost didn't say yes to hot teach coaching because I didn't want to be more overwhelmed. Mm. Mm. I mean, right? I'm so grateful that you gave yourself the opportunity. Um, to show up for this and to, to give yourself first to ask for what you need and be like, I think this might be interesting and, but, but I'm, I don't want it to be more, right? So A, thank you for even just engaging in that conversation and then to show up and, and play with this. Um, I am just honored and delighted to have gotten to play with this with you and thank you for it. Because my sense is that there's a lot of people that are resonating. Let's see, Amy said, my mom was always, or Shane said, my mom was always overwhelmed and never ended up in a possible outcome. It's been embedded in me as well. Overwhelm equals stress, right? Maggie's on it on fog lights, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Amy said, she reminds herself that I only need to show up and focus on the next step in front of me. Also true in fog, right? Right. But like you take the one step. So yeah. There's some okay. things to play with, I think. Yeah. All right. So will you check in with us and let us know? Of course. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you so much, Kim. It was it's always a delight and an honor to get to play. And I appreciate uh, you showing up for the group because I think a lot of people learned a lot of things or uh, gave themselves permission to think about a lot of things. Yes. Yes. Well, I thank always you, appreciate you. your your guidance and thank you for being my my guru in life coaching and my unofficial yoga teacher mentor and all good things. I would be lost without you. I, I will receive that and also offer back not at all true that you would be lost. <laughs> but 
Thank you. Uh, and, but, you know, thank you for doing the work to allow me to show up for you, right? Because I can only show up if you're doing the things. So thank you for that. Thank you. All right. Mwah. Mwah. Bye. Bye. Oh my goodness. Just so many good things, everybody. I just, oh, Maggie. <laughs> All the love for all of you never ended up as a positive outcome. Right, Shane. So this becomes an opportunity. And so here's what I would like. I'm going to offer the same thing, right? You've heard two different uh, explorations here. And I would invite you to just pause for a moment and consider, right, what takeaway are you bringing from what you just heard? Um, Share that in the comments, please. And know that we have one more hot seat opportunity. Next, I'm looking at my calendar, Thursday, the 25th at 1 p.m. Okay, there is still one more space left. So if you're interested, sign up for it. And I can put the link in the comments here. I'll, you know, but if you're if you're interested, just send me a note. Uh, and then I'll send you the application. If we like this, there will be more opportunities, right? Um, so know that hot seat coaching does not have to end next week because there's only one more time in the calendar. If this has been helpful to you, I would love to hear, right? Even if it's not tonight, if you're watching this later or you percolate with these things. So give yourself permission to allow these thoughts um, that you've been a witness to uh, to percolate, to, to kind of play with in your own way um, and see what's there for you. The other thing that I wanted to let you know is that on Tuesday, the 23rd, I think at 1 p.m., but I'm not sure, stay tuned. <laughs> uh, I'm going to lead a little mini workshop, I think on boundaries. Tell me, how does boundaries sound? Um, boundaries is a conversation that I have with a lot of people a lot of time, and it's it's one of the benefits uh, to being more alive and awake and thriving, right? Moving from survival and into thriving so that you can create boundaries for yourself. And boundaries, I think there's a lot of different thinking about boundaries and connotations we have in our brain about boundaries. Uh, a little bit like overwhelm. <laughs> um, and so I thought that that might be something that would be fun to explore. So look for that uh, Tuesday, the 23rd for that coming. Um, let's see, Maggie said takeaways. Pausing is a good thing. Celebrating is important. Be overwhelmed may not be a bad thing, right? Yes, Amy, more opportunities. All the love right back, Kim. Oh, so thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody for participating so very fully. Um, this has just been, I'm, I'm so grateful for everybody that was here live, that for Amy and Kim who participated so courageously. Thank you for that. Uh, let me know, you know, what you need. One of the things that I'm really, really, trying to do here in the Live Your Sunrise group this year and hopefully beyond is to make it a space that is a resource that isn't just white noise on Facebook. And, uh, you know, so the community brain dumps on Sunday, if you haven't joined us at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, the morning journal prompts, right, that we've done every morning since January 1st, um, you know, these things. And lately we've been doing, I've been doing kind of bedtime notes. <laughs> Um, to just give you things that you know you can come to the group and find. So let me know what it is you're craving. Let me know what it is you need. Um, those, that is my ask of you. And actually I have, so I have three asks. Let me know what you need <laughs> and a crave. If you know of somebody who's, you know, would benefit from some of these pieces, invite them into the group, <laughs> right? Why not share it with your besties? And thirdly, is that a thing? If this type of support feels like, huh, I could use a little bit of this, this sense of community, the sense of connection, this sense of 
exploring and looking for new possibilities, if that is of interest, this next Thrive Circle is enrolling. We start two weeks from tonight on the 30th. And the, the women that have already assembled, I mean, all the groups are fabulous, right? Um, so I'm just, but I'm so delighted at you know, the women that have already said yes. So if this is of interest to you, uh, my Thrive Unleashers, you can't do both. I'm gonna tell you now, you can't do both. <laughs> as much as I know, you might like to do Thrive Circle around again because you miss Tuesday nights. Um, <laughs> you can't do both. I mean, you could, but that would be too many things. Um, <laughs> that might be overwhelming, which may not be bad. How's that? But it might be. <laughs> So if this is of interest, right, please reach out to me. Let me know. Let's have a conversation about it. I would love to invite you in and welcome you into the group. That's all I've got, everybody. I'm so, so grateful. Um, you do miss Tuesday nights. I know. I'm know. not doing both. You're like, nope. <laughs> you love the bedtime notes. Oh, I'm so glad, Amy. Um, and Maggie, I know the Tuesday nights. I've already had some thoughts, but um, stay tuned. <laughs> not for now, not for now. Uh, so thank you everybody for being here. Enjoy the rest of your evening, rest well. Um, I'm so, so very, very grateful uh, to everybody that was here live, everybody that's gonna be watching in the future and cheering people on. Thank you. And if you want to participate in the hot seat next week, let me know. Or if you can't do next week, but you want to be on the list for the future, let me know. All right? Buonanotte. Good night, everybody.